I'm delighted to have you as part of this community. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, fellow enthusiasts. Today, we're diving deep into the fascinating world of Arcaspace. Romanian Cosmonautics and Aeronautics Association, also known as Arcaspace, is an aerospace company based in Romicvalsi, Romania. It builds rockets, high-altitude balloons, and unmanned aerial vehicles. It was founded in 1999 as a non-governmental organization in Romania by the Romanian engineer and entrepreneur Dumitru Popescu and other rocket and aeronautics enthusiasts. Since then, ARCA has launched two stratospheric rockets and four large-scale stratospheric balloons, including a cluster balloon. It was awarded two governmental contracts with the Romanian government and one contract with the European Space Agency. Space is currently developing a three-stage, semi-reusable steam-powered rocket called ICFA rocket and in 2022 has shifted its business model to asteroid mining. As we enter this new phase, let's analyze, demonstrate a rocket family from different angles and evaluate its significance. ARCA was established as Romanian Cosmonautics and Aeronautics Association, a non-governmental organization in 1999 by a group of rocket and aeronautics enthusiasts. Their goal was to construct and launch space rockets. After experimenting with designs for different fuels and rocket engine types, including solid fuel rockets, they decided to use fiberglass for engine and tank construction and hydrogen peroxide as fuel. Their first vehicle was named Demonstrator and was a 10M long, unguided, self-stabilized rocket. It never flew, instead it was used in various public exhibitions to attract funds and sponsorships. Their second rocket, Demonstrator 2, was constructed in 2003. For this, ARCA created their first rocket engine testing installation where they tested their hydrogen peroxide engine. After the tests were successful, they constructed Demonstrator up which was an improved version of their previous rocket. It had a length and diameter and used an high launch pad. In 2003 ARCA also signed up for the Ansari X Prize International Competition and started design for the Horizon suborbital vehicle capable of carrying a crew of two up to an altitude of. Horizon was to be Arca's competing vehicle for the Ansari X Prize. It was designed to use a disposable jet engine up to an altitude of and then ignite its main hydrogen peroxide rocket engine in order to propel it to the altitude. On September 9, 2004, ARCA successfully launched the demonstrator of rocket from Cape Midia Air Force Base. Because of powerful wind gusts up to, they were forced to use only 20% of the intended fuel quantity in order to keep with the allocated safety zone by the Air Force. The altitude reached was. 90 journalists from Romania, Germany, and Austria were present at the launch. After the launch, ARCA started construction of the Horizon Space Zeppelin and completed the aircraft structure by 2005. With that being said, let's now move on to Stabilo and Helen rockets. ARCA organized a public presentation of their Horizon Space Zeppelin in front of the Palace of the Parliament in Bucharest. Because of financial problems encountered with the construction of Horizon, ARCA decided to suspend its development and instead design a new, much smaller rocket called Stabilo. It was designed to be launched from a stratospheric solar balloon and carry one person into space. Design and construction of large-scale polyethylene balloons started and on December 2, 2006, at Onesti, Baca, the crew capsule of Stabilo rocket was lifted to an altitude of 14,700 meters. The capsule was safely recovered that evening. The event was transmitted live on several Romanian TV stations. On 27 September 2007, the entire Stabilo rocket crew capsule plus rocket booster was lifted to an altitude of 12,000 meters using the largest solar balloon constructed until that date. The mission was launched from Cape Midia Air Force Base, and the rocket was recovered from the Black Sea surface by Romanian Navy divers. 
at this moment ARC approved its ability to conduct large-scale operations and to coordinate military institutions like the Romanian Navy and the Romanian Air Force. In 2007 ARC A1-2 governmental contracts with the Research Ministry for a suborbital rocket and a solar balloon. The Romanian Space Agency, the University of Bucharest and other Romanian institutions were subcontractors to ARCA for these projects. In early 2008 ARCA joined the Google Lunar X Prize competition and designed the Hoss Orbital Launcher. Their lunar rover was named European Lunar Lander and used a monopropellant rocket engine for landing and hovering. HOSS was a three-stage orbital rocket powered by hybrid engines using a bitumen-based fuel and hydrogen peroxide as oxidizer. It was supposed to be launched from 18,000 meters carried by the largest solar balloon ever constructed, having a volume of 2 million cubic meters. For the HOSS rocket, they created a three-stage much smaller demonstrator called HELEN that was intended to test technologies and operation. The Helen rocket was intentionally not aerodynamically stabilized, being intended to use a technique based on the pendulum rocket fallacy. The Romanian bank BRD Group Societ General awarded ARCA a 300,000 euro sponsorship for their activities. Romanian cosmonaut Dumitru Prunari highly praised Aka's achievements and noted their ability to efficiently utilize private funds. In 2009 ARCA performed a series of engine tests using the Stabilo rocket engine in order to validate the design for the Helen rocket. The first attempt to launch the Helen rocket took place on November 14, 2009. Romanian naval forces participated with the NSS L-281 Constanta ship, the Venus divers ship, the Fulgural fast boat and two other fast craft boats. For this mission, ARCA constructed a massive 150,000 cubic meter solar balloon, approximately five times as large as their previous balloon. After the balloon began inflating, the mission crew discovered that the balloon inflation arms were wrapped around the lower part of the balloon. Inflation was halted and the crew attempted to unwrap the arms. Three hours later the arms were repositioned and inflation was ready to resume but the sun was already nearing the horizon and heating the solar balloon was no longer possible. The decision was made to cancel the mission. ARCA decided to redesign the Helen rocket to use two stages and a helium balloon instead. They named the rocket Helen II. On April 27, 2010, they performed an avionics test for the European Lunar Lander payload to be lifted by the Helen II rocket, using a hot air balloon that lifted three ARCA members to 5,200 meters altitude. On August 4, 2010, a new attempt to launch the rocket was made, but a construction error in the helium balloon caused it to rupture and the mission was aborted. A new helium balloon was manufactured designed to carry only the second stage of Helen II rocket. On October 1, 2010, the rocket performed a successful flight to an altitude of 38,700 meters reaching a maximum velocity of 2320. Upon atmospheric re-entry the rocket capsule parachute failed to deploy and the capsule was lost at sea but the data was transmitted to the Mission Control Center on the 281 Constanta ship and to the Romanian Air Traffic Services Administration. Now, let's redirect our focus towards IAR-111 aircraft, executor engine and Haas rocket family and discover its significance in our narrative. After the difficulties encountered with the stratospheric balloons, ARC had decided to change their approach to orbital launch for the Google Lunar X Prize. They designed a supersonic rocket plane powered by a liquid-fueled rocket engine using kerosene as fuel and liquid oxygen as oxidizer. Their aircraft, initially named E-111, was renamed IAR-111 after ARCA received permission from IARSA Brasov to use the traditional IAR designation for military and civilian aircraft constructed since 1925. The aircraft was intended to fly to an altitude of 17 meters and launch a heavily modified version of the Hoss rocket, named Hoss 2. 
Hoss 2 was an air-launched three-stage orbital rocket intended to place a 200 payload into orbit. Work on the plane structure began in late 2010. By 2011 all the fiberglass molds for the aircraft were finished and one-third of the aircraft structure was completed. The crew capsule escape system was tested on September 26, 2011, when a Milmi-17 helicopter belonging to the Special Aviation Unit dropped the capsule from an altitude of 700 meters over the Black Sea. The emergency parachute deployed successfully and the capsule was recovered from the sea surface by the Romanian Coast Guard. In 2012, ARC Air decided to focus on the construction of the rocket engine of the IAR-111 aircraft. The engine, named Executor, is made of composite materials, has a thrust of 24 tons force 52,000 oomph and is turbopump fueled. It uses ablative cooling for the main chamber and nozzle where the outer layers of the composite material vaporize in contact with the high temperature exhaust mixture and prevent overheating. ARCA also presented a long-term space program until 2025 that besides IAR-111 envisioned a small-scale orbital rocket HOSIC, a suborbital crewed rocket HOSUB and a medium-scale crewed orbital rocket Super HOS. In March 2012, ARC had tested an extremely lightweight composite materials kerosene tank that is intended to be used for the HOSIC rocket. After criticism from the Romanian Space Agency ROSA intensified in printed media and television, ARC decided to send a public letter to the Romanian Prime Minister to intervene in this matter. ARCA mentioned that the Romanian Space Agency is in no position to criticize after the failure of their cubes at Goliath recently launched with the Vega rocket. Furthermore, ARCA was privately funded compared with ROSA which uses public funding. In June 2012 ARCA presented their HOSIC rocket in Victoria Square in Bucharest, in front of the Romanian government palace. The same year ARCA won a 1 million. $200,000 contract with the European Space Agency to participate in the Exomas program. Named the High Altitude Drop Test, the contract consisted of a series of stratospheric balloon drop tests to verify the structural integrity of the EDM parachutes used in Martian atmospheric deceleration. On September 16, 2013, ARCA performed the first successful flight in the Exomas program lifting three pressurized avionics containers over the Black Sea to an altitude of 24,400 meters. In November, the concrete test stand for the executor engine was completed. Get ready to immerse yourself in the world of Airstrato to launch assist system as we examine its impact and relevance. On February 10, ARC presented a high-altitude uncrewed aerial vehicle named Airstrato that was meant to replace stratospheric balloon usage for equipment testing and other near-space missions. It was intended to be solar-powered for extended endurance, was 7 meters in length and had a 16 meters wingspan with a takeoff weight of 230. The aircraft first flew on February 28. ARCA announced that if the development was successful they would consider developing a commercial version available for sale to customers. On October 17, 2014, ARCA announced that it had transferred its headquarters to the United States to Las Cruces, New Mexico. In a press release they announced that in Romania activities related to software and rocket engine development will continue. They also announced that Estrita UAV would be available for purchase to customers and that Las Cruces will also serve as a production center for the aircraft. On November 25 they released a website for the UAV revealing two models available for purchase, a straighter explorer that could reach altitudes up to 18,000 meters with 20 hours endurance and a straighter pioneer that would be limited to 8,000 meters and 12 hours endurance. On July 13, 2015, ARCA announced the beginning of activities in New Mexico, including production and flight tests of Airstrato UAS and HOS rockets, investing. In November 2017, CEO Dimitru Popescu was arrested and charged with 12 counts of fraud.
As a result, he left the country and re-established operations in Romania. The charges were later dropped. In early 2019, ARCA announced the development of the steam-powered launch assist system and began testing the Aerospic engine. As we transition, let's shed light on Iprezent, Icarocket, Omi, and pivot to asteroid mining and its relevance to our ongoing exploration. In 2020, tests of the steam-powered Aerospic continued and ARCA announced a new launch vehicle, the Icarocket, derived from the LAS technology. In 2021, the Icarocket design was altered slightly to a three-stage vehicle as tests of the steam-powered Aerospic continued. In 2022, ARCA announced the OMI Exploration Initiative, effectively pivoting its business model away from the commercial launch sector and towards cryptocurrency and asteroid mining. The OMI program will utilize the OMI cargo vehicle and a car rocket heavy to mine valuable materials from asteroids. Beginning in the late years, the company plans to start a series of asteroid mining missions to return valuable metals mostly platinum to Earth for sale. It intends to fund this venture primarily through the sales of the OMI token, an upcoming cryptocurrency on the Etherum blockchain. With that being said, let's now move on to Hoss Rocket Family. The Hoss Rocket Family was to be a series of rockets of various sizes and configurations intended to replace the initial Hoss balloon launched rocket. After the difficulties encountered with balloon operation in Mission 3 and Mission 4, ARCA decided to redesign the rocket to be ground-launched. Although heavier and more expensive, ground-launched rockets are more reliable, easier to operate and can carry heavier payloads into orbit. Moving forward, we'll be taking a closer look at HOSUB. HOSUB was to be a single-stage suborbital rocket intended for space tourism. It was designed to transport a crew capsule and service module into a suborbital trajectory. The crew capsule and service module would have been the same as the ones used for the larger multi-stage Super Hoss orbital rocket. At the NASADCX conference in Alamogordo, New Mexico in August 2013, ARCA presented an updated version of the Hoss Ub rocket with a capsule capable of carrying a crew of five into space. There were discussions with Spaceport America representatives to operate the Hoss Ub rocket from New Mexico. Brace yourselves for the next chapter, where we'll be dissecting HOSIC. HOSIC was to be an orbital rocket intended for commercial payload launches. There were two planned variants of the rocket, a single-stage-to-orbit variant capable of placing a payload into orbit and a two-stage variant capable of lifting a payload into orbit. After testing the extremely lightweight composite tank, ARC had designed a single-stage long rocket with a total weight of having a thrust-to-weight ratio of and a payload. The company displayed the rocket in Victoria Square in Bucharest, in front of the Romanian government building. The second stage version was to be powered by the executor engine for the lower stage, and the upper stage use a smaller engine adapted for vacuum, named Venator. Brace yourself for an in-depth analysis as we navigate through Hosica and its far-reaching implications. Hosica was to be a rocket designed to be able to launch 100 into a low Earth orbit, at a price of a million per launch. The first flight was intended to launch from Wallops Flight Facility in 2018. The rocket was designed as a single stage to orbit SSTO and featured an aerospic engine, producing 50,500 LF of thrust at sea level and 73,800 LF of thrust in vacuum. In the next segment, we'll be exploring IAR-111 rocket plane and its implications for our subject matter. Romanian aeronautical industry Brayev, also known as IAR-111, was a sea-launched suborbital rocket plane. It used the same executor engine as Hoss of Adic rockets. It was to have a length of, a wingspan of, and a take-off mass of 19 t. It can carry a crew of two a pilot and a passenger. The flight sequence consists of takeoff from sea surface, horizontal flight at subsonic speed, followed by a rapid climb to an altitude of in approximately two minutes. As a space tourism development platform, it could reach 2.6 Mach at Oft. After fuel depletion, 
IAR-111 was to descend in gliding flight and land on the sea surface. In case of emergency, the crew capsule was to be detachable and equipped with two rocket-propelled parachutes. The IAR-111 capsule was flight-tested during Mission 6. The mission took place in cooperation with the Special Aviation Unit and the Coast Guard, belonging to the Ministry of Internal Affairs and Administration. As we move forward, let's uncover the untold stories and fascinating intricacies of Estrato, a manned aerial vehicle. Estrato was an electric-powered medium-sized unmanned aerial vehicle that was being developed by ARCA. There were two variants planned, the Estrato Explorer with a target flight ceiling of 18,000 meters and Estrato Pioneer with a target flight ceiling of 8,000 meters. It was supposed to carry a 45 payload consisting of surveillance equipment, scientific instruments, or additional battery pods for extended autonomy. The first prototype's maiden flight took place on February 28, 2014. It was equipped with fixed landing gear. Two more prototypes were constructed that lacked landing gear. Instead, ARC opted for a pneumatic catapult as a launcher and landing skids and a recovery parachute for landing. Both prototypes only performed takeoff and landing testing and short low altitude flights. As we progress through this video, let's shift our attention towards ESA drop test vehicle and uncover its hidden depths. ARCA has constructed a drop test vehicle for the European Space Agency intended to test the atmospheric deceleration parachutes for the Exima's ED Amanda module. It has the same weight and parachute deployment systems present on the ESA module. The DTV is intended to be lifted to an altitude of 20 fork by a stratospheric helium balloon. From that height, it will fall free reaching a dynamic pressure similar to that encountered by the Exima's EDM at entry into the Mars atmosphere. At that dynamic pressure the parachute will deploy and the module will land on the Black Sea surface and will be recovered by the Romanian naval forces. Now, it's time to shift gears and explore a carket demonstrator. The Akarkit Demonstrator, formerly just Akarkit, is a partially reusable three-stage orbital launch vehicle currently under development. The Akarkit Demonstrator is slated to launch in 2022. The vehicle's reusable first stage will use a battery-powered steam rocket to propel a small second stage to an altitude of 7 km. The second stage will then proceed to a higher altitude to deploy a tiny third stage, carrying the payload. The third stage utilizes RP-1 and high-test peroxide to propel a payload of up to 10 kilograms into orbit. The rocket takes its name from the supposed ecological benefits of not burning as much kerosene despite using kerosene to achieve most of orbital velocity. The carket will launch partially submerged in the Black Sea, in a similar manner to the Sea Dragon. Both the first and second stages are intended to be reusable parachuting back into the ocean for recovery. The vehicle is intended to demonstrate technologies for the upcoming Icarocket Heavy. As we transition to the next segment, let's unravel the mysteries surrounding Icarocket Heavy and gain a fresh perspective. The Icarocket Heavy is a planned variant of Icarocket, designed to support Aka's Omi Asteroid Mining Initiative. The Icarocket Heavy will be a three-stage launch vehicle derived from Icarocket's technology. The stages will be arranged concentrically around the payload in the center in a layout occasionally called onion staging, with the outermost stage firing, then detaching and allowing the next outermost stage to ignite, and so on. The carket heavy, like the carket, will use a three-stage design, with the first two stages using steam power and the final stage using a crocini liquid oxygen mixture to propel itself to orbit. Each stage will consist of multiple propulsion modules attached together, in a manner many commentators have compared to the now-defunct German launch company OTRAG. The vehicle will be 30 meters in diameter, and, like the Ikarkid demonstrator, will launch from the ocean, and be partially reusable, recovering the first two stages. The Ikarkid heavy largely abandons aerospic engines, using only traditional rocket nozzles. With the groundwork laid, let's now examine Omicargo and its connections to our previous discussions. 
the Omi cargo vehicle is the vehicle designed to support Akka's asteroid mining operations and as the primary payload for the Ikarkit Heavy. The Omi cargo vehicle will approach an asteroid and then release the battery-powered recovery capsule which appears to be derived from the earlier suburbital capsule for the Haas Ub, which will use the engine on its service module to approach the target asteroid. The spacecraft will then harpoon the asteroid, then reel itself in to begin mining operations. Upon completion of mining, it will return to the Omi cargo vehicle, which will propel it back to Earth. Upon reaching Earth, the capsule will detach and jettison the service module prior to re-entry. The capsule will then splash down under parachute for recovery of the material inside. ARCA intends to eventually upgrade the spacecraft for uncrewed missions to other planets. To support deep space operations, ARCA intends to construct their own deep space network akin to NASA's system. Now, let's shift our perspective and explore Executor through a fresh lens, unlocking new perspectives. The Executor was a liquid-fueled rocket engine intended to power the IAR-111 Excelsior supersonic plane and Hoss up and it rockets. Executor was an open-cycle gas generator rocket engine that uses liquid oxygen and kerosene and has a maximum thrust of 24 tons force. ARCA decided to use composite materials and aluminum alloys on a large scale. The composite materials offer low construction costs and reduced weight of the components. They were used in the construction of the combustion chamber and the nozzle, and also the gas generator and some elements in the turbo pumps. The combustion chamber and the nozzle are built from two layers. The internal layer is made of silica fiber and phenolic resin, and the external one is made of carbon fiber and epoxy resin. The phenolic resin reinforced with silica fiber pyrolyzes endothermally in the combustion chamber walls, releasing gases like oxygen and hydrogen, leaving a local carbon matrix. The gases spread through the carbon matrix and reach the internal surface of the wall where they meet the hot combustion gases and act as a cooling agent. Furthermore, the engine is equipped with a cooling system that injects 10% of the total kerosene mass onto the internal walls. The pump volutes were made of 6062 type aluminum alloy. The pump rotors are made through luffing and milling using 304 type steel. The supersonic turbine was made of refractory steel, both the core and the blades. The turbine rotation speed was 20,000 revolutions per minute and has a 1.5 MW power. The intake gas temperature was 620 C. The main engine valves were made of 6060 type aluminum and were pneumatically powered, without adjustment. The engine injector and the liquid oxygen intake pipes were made of 304 L type steel and the kerosene intake pipe was made of composite materials. The engine had the possibility to shift the thrust by 5 degrees on two axes. The articulated system was made of composite materials and high grade steel alloy. The engine is rotated using two hydraulic pistons that use kerosene from the pump exhaust system. ARCA announced that the executor engine had a thrustless ratio of 110. Our focus now turns to Venator, an important aspect of our discussion. Venator was a liquid fueled pressure fed rocket engine that will be used to power the second stage of the Hoss Ick rocket. It burned liquid oxygen and kerosene and had a maximum thrust of 2.5 tf. The engine had no valves on the main pipes. Instead, it used burst discs on the main pipes, between the tanks and the engine. The second stage was pressurized at at liftoff and after the first stage burn out, the second stage would be pressurized at 16 atm. At that pressure the discs would burst and the fuel would flow through the engine. As we transition to the next segment, let's unravel the mysteries surrounding LAS and gain a fresh perspective. The launch assist system was an aerospic engine that was to use electrically heated water to produce steam, which would then generate thrust. The LAS was to reduce cost of rockets by manner of reducing the associated complexity, since steam-powered rockets are far less complex than even the simplest liquid-fueled engines. 
it was to be a self-contained unit including both the engine and propellant tank. It could theoretically achieve a specific impulse of 67 seconds. The LAS was proposed to be a first stage for the Hossica rocket, or to serve as a strap-on booster for existing vehicles, including the Atlas V, Falcon 9, Delta IV, and Ariane 6. The carcass demonstrator and heavy will use a reworked version of this system with two nozzles, one for launch and one for landing called the LAS. Now, let's shift our attention to OMI propulsion system. The OMI cargo vehicle will use a new propulsion system, described by ARCA as electric arc propulsion. The reaction mass will be water, and the impulse will be provided electrically using electricity from large solar arrays. Beyond this, not much is known about the nature of this system. However, ARCA intends it to be capable of running for days on end. Get ready for an exciting exploration as we unravel the mysteries of missions. Flight Program Category Altitude Destination Ship Configuration Engine Start Status First Flight Demonstrator Uncrewed 1 meters Ground Launched Rocket Yes Completed Mission 1 Stabilo Uncrewed 22 meters Carrier Balloon Plus Crew Cabin No Completed Mission 2 Stabilo Uncrewed 22 meters Carrier Balloon Plus Complete Ship No Completed Mission 3 Lunar Project Helen Test Rocket Uncrewed 100 meters Carrier Balloon Plus Helen 3 Stages Yes Unsuccessful Mission for Lunar Project Helen 2 Test Rocket and Crewed 100 Meters Carrier Balloon Plus Helen 2 2 Stages Yes Unsuccessful Mission A Lunar Project Helen 2 Test Rocket Single Stage and Crewed 40 Meters Carrier Balloon Plus Helen 2 1 Stage Yes Completed Mission 5 Avionics and TV Transmission Test Crewed 5 Meters Carrier Balloon Plus Stage 1 Helen 2 Plus ELL No Completed Mission 6 Cabin Drop Safety Test and Crewed 700 Meters IAR1 111 cabin dropped by helicopter no completed mission 8 equipment test propulsion and data transmission uncrewed stratospheric payload with undisclosed rocket yes completed pick summers h adt avionics qualification test uncrewed 24,000 meters pressurized gondola no completed cuba senja b o i e a s space launch and crewed orbital hoss ic no program cancelled mission 7 suborbital plane test crewed 16 meters IR-111 Yes Program Cancelled Mission 9 BTOL Test of a Carcat and Crewed and a Carcat No Cancelled Mission 10 First Orbital Flight Test of a Carcat and Crewed KM a Carcat No Planned. With that being said, let's now move on to Mission 1. Mission 1 took place on December 2, 2006, when a solar balloon carried the STABILO system capsule to an altitude of the altitude was slightly lower than intended because of extreme turbulence encountered during the last stage of the flight. In light of this, it was decided not to risk damaging the system. The flight had been planned since August 2006, when another large solar balloon was launched at low altitude in controlled flight. During this time a specially designed parachute was tested. It was the first stratospheric flight performed by ARCA, and the event was transmitted live. Over 20 journalists were present. Get ready for an exciting exploration as we unravel the mysteries of Mission 2. Mission 2 of STABILOB was launched on 27 September 2007 from Cape Midia Air Force Base. The Romanian Air Force participated with two radar stations. Civil Aviation and the Romanian Navy also participated, the latter with one naval diver's ship. The first and second vehicle stages reached an altitude of. After one hour and thirty minutes and having travelled from the launch location, STABILO landed on the sea surface and was intercepted by a Navy Saturn ship and recovered by divers. The recovery ship was guided by the satellite transmission system and by Air Force radar. The vehicle was transported to the Navy shipyard. The electronic equipment continued to transmit to the command center even eight hours after the flight had ended. Moving ahead, let's uncover the hidden gems within Mission 3, 4 and UB and discover their significance. Helen was a demonstrator rocket for the Hoss balloon launched orbital rocket. It was intended to test in flight the avionics and gravitational stabilization method proposed for the much larger Hoss rocket. 
Helen was intended to reach an altitude of. Two versions were created, a three-stage rocket that had cylindrical tanks and used hydrogen peroxide as a propellant fuel, and a two-stage spherical tank rocket that used the same propulsion type. The rocket used a physically flawed stabilization technique based on the pendulum rocket fallacy. Mission 3 took place on November 14, 2009, on the Black Sea. Romanian naval forces participated in the mission with one logistical ship, one diver's ship, and another fast craft. For this mission, ARCA constructed the largest stratospheric helium balloon to date. An error in construction caused the balloon's inflation arms to wrap around the base of the balloon when it was inflated. The team managed to unwrap the arms and resume inflation but sunset was approaching and the solar balloon could no longer be used. The mission was cancelled. The mission for Arca Space decided to use a helium balloon instead and to redesign the Helen rocket. The new version, named Helen 2, was prepared for flight on August 4, 2010. When balloon inflation was initiated, the balloon ruptured because of a construction error and the mission was cancelled. A new attempt was made on October 1, 2010, by using only the final stage of the Helen 2 rocket and a smaller helium balloon. The flight, named Mission Nub, was successful, Helen 2 launching at an altitude of and the rocket reaching an altitude of. After the difficulties encountered with stratospheric balloons, ARCA decided to stop work on the Hoss rocket and design a new family of ground-launched orbital and suborbital rockets. As we transition, let's shed light on Mission 5 and its relevance to our ongoing exploration. Mission 5 was carried out in partnership with the Romanian Air Club and the Romanian Aeronautic Federation. It took place before the Helen 2 rocket launch. The flight took place on April 27, 2010, between 7.45 and 8.45 am, taking off from Hodes, Brasov. A man hot air balloon lifted the Helen 2 rocket pressurized capsule to an altitude of the maximum distance between the carrier balloon and the command center at San Petru airfield was, which corresponded with the Helen 2 rocket simulated safety zone. The balloon crew was composed of Mihai Ili pilot, Nugrol Inescu co pilot, and Dumitru Popescu ELL equipment operator. The objective of the flight was to test telemetry command and live TV transmission for the Helen 2 rocket. In the following section, we'll be immersing ourselves in the captivating world of Mission 6. Mission 6 tested the recovery system for the IAR-111 supersonic plane crew capsule. On September 26, 2011, a Mi-17 helicopter from Special Aviation Unit lifted the capsule to above mean sea level. At that altitude, the helicopter released the capsule. The parachute deployed, and the capsule landed on the sea surface. It was recovered by the same helicopter with the help of the Romanian Coast Guard. Let's now venture into the realm of WHOOP and explore the fascinating intricacies it holds. WHOOP was a validation test flight for the Eximas program High Altitude Drop Test HADT, carried out in cooperation with the European Space Agency. The launch took place from the Black Sea coast on September 16, 2013, and the hardware comprised three pressurized containers containing the avionics equipment that will be necessary to test the Exima's spacecraft parachute during future incoming flights. The pressurized containers, carried by a cluster balloon, were launched at 715 amplitude modulation and the ascension took 90 minutes. When the containers reached an altitude of, they were released under a dedicated recovery parachute and landed on the sea 20 minutes later. The containers and the recovery parachute were recovered by the Navy from the launch point. The objectives were flight testing the avionics and communication systems, demonstrating the container sealing after sea landing and the capability to identify and recover the equipment from the sea surface. Without further ado, let's move on to the topic of Mission 9. Mission 9 was to be a short vertical hop of the ICAR rocket's first stage, testing the booster landing system in much the same manner as SpaceX's Starripper. This mission has apparently been scrapped, however, 
a RC a completed a short, low-altitude flight of the Ikarkit demonstrator's second stage in the fall of 2021 with no landing attempt to test the RCS systems aboard the rocket. The stage was attached to an umbilical during the flight. As we progress through this video, let's now turn our gaze towards Mission 10. Mission 10 will be the first orbital flight of the Ikarkit. Your feedback helps me improve, so please take a moment to leave a comment or review.